verse number 7 until the end of the verse. We'll read this responsively. All my state shall Tychicus declare unto you, who is a beloved brother and a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. With Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you, they shall make known unto you all things which are done here. And Jesus, which is called Justus, who are of the circumcision, these only are my fellow workers unto the kingdom of God, which have been a comfort unto me. For I bear him record that he hath a great zeal for you, and them that are in Laodicea, and them in Hierapolis. Salute the brethren which are in Laodicea, and Nymphas, and the church which is in his house. And say to Archippus, Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. The salutation by the hand of me, Paul, remember my bonds. Grace be with you. Amen. Lord bless us as we study your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, you will notice that at the end of uh, the piece of the Apostle Paul to the churches at Colossae, he mentioned or gave tribute to those people who were indispensable in the ministry. These are people who, <clears throat> most of them at least, have uh, helped him to accomplish the task that God has given him. These are the people that Encourage him to keep on keeping on despite of all the threats that he received from the Jews, from the enemies of the cross, and from people who are, you know, controlled by the devil in order to destroy everything that is good in the ministry of the Lord. Remember, we are in a battle. We always say that, that we are soldiers. And as soldiers, we must always be ready to battle. But, as I have said a while ago, it is so sad that many soldiers are not willing to take up their arms and fight. They wanted to live peaceably with the enemies. They quote the verse that as much as, as possible, live peaceably with all men. Yes, it will be possible if all men are living and believing the same thing. Or if all men at least are not aggressive in what they are trying to proclaim which is error. Just like recently, if you will notice on your Facebook, at least in my Facebook, I've noticed it, but maybe if we, do, we, we have different friends, you may not notice it, but there are so many posts regarding the two natures of the Lord Jesus Christ nowadays. And the reason for this is because there is a pastor in the Philippines who is supposed to be an icon when it comes to Baptist faith in the Philippines thought something that is heretical and it was called during the third century 
as monophysite or monophysite. Meaning to say that God or Jesus has only one nature. It teaches that the divine nature of Jesus absorbed the human nature of Jesus. Meaning that when Jesus died, God died. Which of course is heretical because God will not die. God will always be living. God will always be alive. So, when pastors heard this, at least those who have the backbone to tell the truth regarding doctrine, they posted. Actually, even Calvinists came into the fray. And they posted that they believe in hypostatic union, that Jesus is 100% God and Jesus is 100% man. Now, there is another teaching that is heretical that Jesus is 50% God and 50% man. So it is, he is a humanized divine nature or a deified human nature. So, because this pastor is very influential, you will notice in those posts that very, very few pastors gave their comments and even agreed to the post. But I remember when the Pope visited the Philippines, I do not know what year was that, the recent visit of the Pope. There was a certain pastor who said something against the Pope, which of course is true, but he said it in a vulgar way. Yung pabalbal. And when he said that, this person who taught, who is teaching now, that Jesus Christ has on, have only one nature, made an official statement from BBF. I condemning the person who said something against the Pope signed by many Bible Baptist pastors condemning the person who said something against the Pope in a vulgar way but is true tama mali lang ang pagkakasabi alimbawa hindi ka magandang lalaki uh, pwede mo sabihin ah, medyo hindi ka kagandahan lalaki Hindi masakit. Uh, Paumanin na pero medyo may, may kapangitan ka. Masakit na yon. Pero mukha kang bakulaw. Ah, ibang usapan yon. Masyadong masakit yon. Vulgar yon. Vulgar way yon. Hindi dapat ganun. There are words that you can use. Pero nakamali ito. Eh kasi personality nitong pastor na ito, talagang ganun siya. So, talagang lahat halos sumakay sa bandwagon. At kinundem yung tao. Ini inihintay ko na nga lang na sabi ng pamilya nagpakamatay na po ang tatay ko. Dal talagang dinikdik siya. Tama ang sinabi niya in a vulgar way. Eto ngayon mali. Heretical. Walang kumikibo. Pag hindi ka nagalit o na disturb spiritually. Ano ibig sabihin? Kaya ano eh, minsan yung mga nakikipaglaban, sasabihin nyo, masyado kayong garapal. Hindi ko kami garapal eh. Naiinis ko kami. Sa pagkataban nakikipaglaban kayong akala mo, kakampi mo, kaaway mo pala. Iyon ang ibig sabihin nun. na lahat ng sinasabi mo pala, pumapasok dito, lumalabas doon. Wala namang paninindigan na tumayo at sabihin, pag paumanin niyo po, hindi ako agree sa inyo. I will find another church. Or at least, I will just stay in my room. Or at least, kukuha ko ng live stream every Sunday, doon na lang ako makikinig. But they have to bear hearing this 
Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday without giving regard to the Word of God. Saan ka nakakita ang simbahan na yung hapon na service dinedicate sa question and answer, interactive saan, saan, saan? Nang sa ganun, ano man ang nasa loob ng puso nyo, ng isipan nyo, ano man ang iniipit nyo sa mga kilikili ninyo, pwede nang itanong at mapag-usapan. Why? Because we only want biblical truth. At kung tama ka, maawa ka naman sa amin, ang tagal na naming mali, tulungan mo kami. Itama mo kami. Nang sa ganun, hindi kami nagpapatuloy sa maling ito. Buksan mo lang ang Biblia, pakita mo, walang sino man dito sa amin ko kontra pag ipinakita mo sa Word of God. Sa kayo nakakita ng church, ang mag-ama madalas magtalo pagdating sa doktrina. Kadali kong kausapin niyan, Jong, pag may hindi ka agree, pwede ba mag-ama naman tayo, mag-usap na lang tayo, wag na lang sa church. Kadali-dali kong kausapin niyan na ganun. Pero bakit hindi? Eh, bakit kayo susupress kung ano yung paniniwala nyo? Yung tingin nyo, pinakita nyo yung pruweba nyo, we pray. Ngayon, kung ito naman na hindi maapektuhan ng kaligtasan, we can agree to disagree. And nothing will happen. But we continue on searching for the truth, looking for the truth, proclaiming the truth, and living for the truth. That is what we need to do. And these people that Paul mentioned are people that stuck by him through thick and thin. That no matter what happens, they are going to stick with the man of God because they know this man of God, though imperfect as he is, is fighting for what is right and for what is true. Why? Because if the Lord will tarry His coming, we need to help the next generation still find truth in churches. Sabi nga nung grupo ng mga mga awit, wala ka bang napapansin sa iyong mga kapaligiran. Kay dumi na ng hangin, pati na ang mga ilog natin. Ano sabi niya na, may lyrics yung sabi niya, para, a, ano pa kaya, saan pa kaya dadapo ang mga ibon? Saan pa maliligo ang mga bata? Pag lumunda ka sa ilog pasig, pag angat mo, taong grasa ka na. Ano sabi niya, linisin natin ang kapaligiran, bakit? Kasi meron pang dadating na henerasyon. Na-deprive sila. Nung bata ako, may mga tutupi pa. Saan ka makakakita ng tutupi ngayon sa Maynila? Nakapaglalaro pa kami ng, sa mga dayami. Ang mga dayami ngayon sa malalayong probinsya na lang. Sa Manila, maraming dayami, dayami, dinadaya siya. Yun ang marami doon. Saan pa? Wala na. So kung yung henerasyon ngayon magmamalasakit para sa dadating na henerasyon, lalaki yan si JL, anong maririnig niya sa simbahan? Ito mga batang to, anong maririnig sa simbahan? Kung magkakasawa kayo at magkakaanak kayo, ano maririnig nila later on sa simbahan? At anong paninindigan ang ipapakita nyo when it comes to spiritual truth? Ano? ba? Diba? Wala na. Ngayon ang mga malalakas ng loob at namamayag pag yung mali, ang tatapang nila. Siguro, hindi ka naniniwalang tama tayo. Kaya hindi ka makatindig. Eh ba't hindi mo sabihin na hindi tayo tama at sabihin mo kung ano yung tama? Ay hindi kasi katulad ng ginawa nyo sa iba, ikokondem nyo kami. Kailan namin? Kaya nga nakakapag-question kayong walang pangalan nyo. Oh, hindi pa ba enough security yun? Ano man ang pagsasabihin? Hindi mo naman alam na ako. Oh. Di ba? We are only seeking for the truth. Marami na ngayon nangyayari. Ang mga tao ngayon, they do not even respect the local church anymore. 
We decide as a church, we wrote letters as a church about a person, and those people will still accept those people disregarding the discipline that the church imposed to those people. Pastor, the reason why I cannot stand for the faith is because there are people in the church that I do not like. Where can you find a church that you like everybody? The reason why I'm not, I'm not standing for the reason is because I do not like the pastor. The pastor is not living right. Where can you find a church where the pastor is living right all the time? But the question is this. If the pastor or a member or a leader may not be living right, but they are willing to repent and change their ways, is it not enough reason for you to do what is right? And even though they are not, you have an obligation to the truth. Ganun pa rin yun eh. Sabi ko nga, ang pastor ko napakabait. Bibihira ang makapagsasalita against him. Pero we do not always agree. There are things that I do not agree with him. Pero we can agree to disagree. We do not have to fight. We can talk and we can settle things by the grace of God. Isa sa hindi namin magpagkasunduan ito. Pag tinawag ka ng Diyos, ang Diyos ang bahala sa iyo, huwag kang hingin ng tulong sa amin. Ayoko ng ganun. Gusto ko pag sinend out natin, tulungan natin. Siya kasi talagang, nung humingi ako ng tulong, siya tumawag sa iyo? Ang Diyos po. Eh, ba't ako kinakausap mo? Kausapin mo ang Diyos. Ah, opo. Pastor, padagdag ng support. Sino tumawag sa iyo? Ang Diyos po, hindi humingi ka ng dagdag ng support sa Diyos. Hmm. Hindi kami, ako, hindi ako agree doon. Kasi, when you send somebody out, it is our responsibility as a church because we send them out. We do not agree on those things. Pero we did not fight. And I did not say to myself, I cannot trust this pastor. Because this pastor does not care for the people that he send out. Hindi ko kagawin yun. Bakit? Hindi naman siya pinaglilikuran ko ang Diyos eh. Ibang usapan, pag nagturo na siya ng mali, that is where you draw the line. Kaya kung tingin nyo, ang tinuturo ko o ng mga leaders dito mali, draw the line, stand up for what you believe is right. And fight with all your might for what you believe is right. Sabi ko nga, what a blessing to have people in our church who knew the truth. Praise God. Testimony ni Brother Mon. Pastor Jesse, talagang mahaba lang mag-preach, mahaba lang sumagot. Pero kung pakikinggan mo, my, biro mo. Kasi pag sumagot siyang kompleto, serikado siya. Talagang haba. Pastor Gut lang ito. Napapaganun na eh. Ako rin, minsan, napapaganun na eh. Pero kaya lang yung tao, ang kanyang, ang kanyang, ano ng conscience niya, I have to declare the truth. Kita mo, hindi siya nag, ano sa oras, wala siyang pakialam. Kasi para sa kanya, mas mahalaga yung katotohanan kesa sa oras. Dahil ang oras laging meron ka, hindi laging meron kang katotohanan. Di ba? So, ganun siya. Kaya kita mo, makikipag-usap yan, magsumala kayong alas 12 na tanghali, hanggang alas 12 na madaling araw, nag-uusap pa rin kayo. Actually, nangyari yan. Kausap yan ng 12 to 7 si Reggie, 7 to 12.30 si Haji. Kita mo, Gigi. Reggie, Haji. Hmm. Gusto pang humirit ni Moni. Oh. Hanggang ala, pinagsara na sila ng brown. Nag-uusap pa rin. Umupo na sa kalye nag-uusap pa rin. Bakit? Kasi yung tao gusto niyang i-disseminate yung truth. Kahit nakakapagod na. Ang hirap na. May mga tao naman pwede nang malamang yung truth. Ayaw pa. Iiwanan pa. Bakit? Sariling dahilan. Mas mahalaga ang pera kesa sa truth. Bakit may monopoly pa kayo ng truth? Wala. 
Pero at least, isang bagay. Alam mo, nang pinagsusumika pang alamin dito, katotohanan. Isang bagay. Hindi tayo pwede magmalaki kahit na kanino bukod doon na pinagsusumika pa natin alamin kung ano yung tama. At pag nalaman natin kahit sino makabangga, itatanyag natin yung katotohanan. Why? Because it is the truth. Hindi ko makakalumutan. Ayun, pastor ko, may mga sinabi na habang po, hindi ko makakalumutan. Joel kanya, eto ang truth ha. Eto kanya, Joel, ang false kanya. Ang truth, hindi matitinag yan. Pag nagbangga yan, ang false kanya, ayan nga, false eh, false. Sa truth. Pero eto nakakalungkot kanya. Eto ang false, eto ang truth. Yung truth, siyang yumuyok po sa false. That should not be. Because no matter what you do, the truth will stand. Di ba, naawit natin yung kahit though the stars fall? Ay, hindi, hindi. Yung sa Bible, the, yung ano? Ano ba yung Bible? Awit natin sa Bible? Do, hindi, hindi. Yung sa Bible? The Bible stand. Like a rock. Kahit ano pa mangyari, hindi mo matitinag. Pero kapatid, bakit natitinag sa'yo yung Bible? Di ba? Bakit natitinag? Ako, hindi ako makapagmamalaki ng kahit na ano sa buhay ko kasi ako nakakatayo lang only by the grace of God. If God will expose my life, maaaring sabihin niyo, hindi ka qualified, di ako makikinig sa'yo. It is only by the grace of God that I can stand. Pero mga kapatid, no matter what, what I am trying to teach and teaching in this church is the truth of the Word of God. If I err from that, it doesn't matter kahit na perfecto ang pamumuhay ko. Because what's important is the truth. At ako, kailangan continually mag-adjust ako dun sa truth. And continually change my life to conform to the truth. Ganun yung Kaya nga, as long as we live, sabi nga nila, habang may buhay, may pag-asa. Amen? Yun ang ibig sabihin noon. Kaya nga lahat tayo, we need to adjust. Pero yung iba sa inyo, you made up your mind that this is what you're going to do and there is nothing, no amount of preaching, no amount of Bible, no amount of the conviction of the Holy Spirit that can change my mind. Why? Because I've already decided to do what I should do. You should do that if you have decided to follow Jesus. But not because you, 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 you are following your own self. Ganun. So, Paul said that these people are the ones that encourage him. That's why Paul was able to fight until the end. Sa tingin nyo ba kung si Paul nag-iisa lang mafi-finish niya yung course niya? Hindi mga kapatid. Bibigay at bibigay si Paul. I am sure of that. Bakit? Kasi kaya nga pinaparangalan ni Paul tong mga tuwi. Eh. Because they help him do or finish his ministry if not for God and if not for them, he's going to have a rougher sailing, a more tougher ministry that may break him to the point of maybe turning his back or raising up his hand in surrender to the unceasing onslaught of the devil. Because the devil is a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. If the lion sees that you are alone, then you are his target. You are his prey. But if you are in a pack, the lion will only linger. Why? Because he cannot attack the pack. Because the pack will protect itself. Ganun yun. Kaya kung nanonood kayo ng ano, yung uh, national, ano ba yun? Tsaka yung animal planet. Pansin ninyo yung lion, pag may mga ano, nakagano lang sila, babantay-bantay. Pag may isang naligaw, ah, atakihin na yun. Tapos na yun. Bakit? Wala na eh. Wala nang protection eh. 
Pero pag marami, hindi siya makaka-attack basta. Kasi marami magpo-protecta. So this is the same thing with the Apostle Paul. So we can see that Paul, as he closes the book of Colossians, gave tribute to the people who in one way or the other has helped him or had helped him in order to finish the task that God has given him. Who are these people? And what are the characteristics of those people that when you put them all together will form or will make a formidable defense against the attack of the devil to those people who are doing the work of God. Because we help each other, we protect each other, we fight for each other, we watch one another's back. That is what we should be doing. We do not bite one another's back, but we protect one another's back. Look at verse 7. He says, All my state shall tikaikos. Brat kung lalaki. Tikaikos. Ang palayaw, tikai. Ganda. Di ba? All my state shall tikaikos declare unto you, who is a beloved brother and a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. You see, he is talking about Tychicus, a man with a servant's heart. Would you not make it if the people surrounding you are people with a servant's heart? People who are willing to serve God, people who are faithful in the ministry, people who are lovable, people who are doing what you are doing because you believe in the same thing for the same God, for the same cause, for the same result to glorify God in everything that you do. It is a comfort and an encouragement if you will have Tikaikos around you. If you are being surrounded by Tikaikos who are doing what they're supposed to do in order that each and everyone will see to it that we reach the finish line holding hands together for God. Ang laking encouragement. Pag may Tikaikos ka, sabi niya, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose that he might know your estate and comfort your hearts. You see, I'm in prison. This is what's happening to me. Tikaikos will go there and he will tell you everything and I want to know everything that is happening to you and he will comfort you. I'm in prison. I am comforted by him. He will go to you and he will comfort you. Okay lang yun, nahihirapan ka sa laban. Pero pag uwi mo ng bahay, sasabihin sa'yo, kaya mo yan. Halika, magmi-minister ako sa'yo. Ako ang bahala. Mag-relax ka, mag-gather ka ng lakas. Because you're going to fight another day. Hindi yung pagod na pagod ka ng pakikipaglaban. Bukol-bukol ka na pag uwi mo. Pasa-pasa ka na pagdating. Ay, tsura mong yan. Wala ka na kasing ginawa kung di makipagbasa gulo. Ang ginagawa mo naman tama. Kikipaglaban ka naman sa tama. Hindi na nga tumutulong itong snacking blade na to. I-discourage ka pa. Sabi ko nga, ako makakalabang ko na lahat. Okay lang. Pero sana yung kakampi ko, iniisip kong kakampi ko, sana kakampi ko. Sabi ng iba, walang kampihan. Sabi, hunyango ka na lang habang buhay. May dalawang magkaibang paniniwala. Ah, wala pa akong kinakampihan. Eh, ano tinitindigan mo? Minsan hindi naintindihan ito. Akala nila cool. Ay, hindi ako po, wala akong kinakampihan. Hindi ko kinakampihan sa Diyos, hindi ko kinakampihan sa demonyo. Sa gitna lang ho ako. Hindi nag-iisip yun sa mga tao eh. Wala, wala ako i-co-condemn. You do not condemn what is wrong. Kaya mga kapatid, in, in a battle, in a, in a battle, in a battle, you cannot stand in the middle. Patay ka! Lahat ng bala dadaan sa'yo. Sige, nagbabaril lang ito, nagbabaril lang ito, nasa gitna ka. Dalawang bala tatama sa'yo. Di ba? Hindi ka na nga lumalaban, yung lumalaban, haatakin mo pang palis. Oh. 
Tapos sasabihin mo, kaya ayokong umaten. Pag-aten ko, ako titirahin. Ano gusto mo? Ayunan ka. Mali ginagawa mo. Mahintay niya mga tao talaga minsan. Paano ako nga atin naatakiin ako? Eh, ba't naaatake ka? Pag tama ka, inatake ka. Salamat sa Diyos. Pag mali ka, inatake ka. Panginoon, turuan mo ako. Yun ang attitude. Hindi yung, sabi ko ni, ako na naman. Ganito, ganun. Ako na naman ang nakita. Kaya kayo naatake kasi mahal ka eh. Terrible yung buhay talaga ito. Minsan, hindi mo na talaga alam ang gagawin mo kapag ikay pastor. Hmm. Si Kaikos is mentioned five times in the New Testament. Limang beses na banggit. And one thing that you will notice if you will read all the verses, you will see that the Kaikos willingness to travel with the Apostle Paul to Rome shows his servant's heart. Why? Kasi nasa prison si Paul nung isulat niya to. And even though nasa prison si Paul, si Tikaikos continually ministered to Paul as a messenger. Punta sa prison. Ano po, Sir Paul? Sabi mo sa Laodicea ganito. Sige, Laodicea. Eh, sabi ni Paul. Uh-huh, okay. Ito po nangyayari sa Laodicea ngayon. Eh, hindi naman ho may aeroplano noon. Nandaling mag-travel. Hindi naman may pass up. Dali po, two minutes. Na madaling mag-travel. Halos nag lalakad dyan, sumasakay ng camel, sumasakay ng kabayo, yung distansya, pagkalalayo, pero hindi tumigil. Why? Because he believed in what Paul is doing and he said, no matter what happened, even if I will go to and pro, I will do it. Why? Because I want to serve God and the servant of God. Yun ang ginawa ni Tikaikos. Messenger siya nung nasa kulungan at nung mga nasa laya na ang matindi, yung nasa kulungan, ini-encourage yung nasa laya. Kabaligtaran. Na kung paano silang magpapal. Kaya sabi niya, sasabihin sa iyo yung estate ko, ni Tikay Kus, yung kalagayan ko, para malaman ko rin ang kalagayan niyo. At ma-encourage niya, kayo, kung si Tikay Kus, discouragement ang nakita niya, how can he encourage the churches at Colossae? He saw that this man, who was in prison for preaching the word of God, is in high spirits, is doing what he should, is writing epistles, encouraging people, praying to the Lord, not complaining about the situation, not having self-pity, not looking at the world around him, but only looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of his faith, and doing things that will glorify God. He says, I want to serve with that man. And Tikaikos remained. Don't you know that we are all messengers for the Lord Jesus Christ? And as a messenger, we should be like Tikaikos, a beloved brother, a faithful minister, and a fellow servant in the Lord. He was a beloved brother, which means he has fervent affection. God is love. And we ought to love as the children of God. Amen? Amen. Beloved, mahal niya ang mga tao. Masasabi mo ba lahat ng members dito, pati pastor mo, mahal mo? Nang totohanan sa puso mo? Ay hindi ho. Meron akong hindi gusto dyan. Hindi ko humamamahal yan. Ang hirap nga, ilalo na ngayon, yung mababasa mo yung love your enemies, talagang pambihiran, napakahirap eh. Talagang sasabihin, ay, sasabihin ko sa'yo, ay, naku naman talaga. Ay, mapapasur, sus Mario, sabi ka talaga kapag love your enemies. Eh, gusto kong manakal ng tao ngayon eh. Wala rito. Gusto kong manakal ng tao ngayon eh. 
Gusto ko mang basag ng ulo ngayon eh. Pero sabi ng Diyos, love your enemies. Pag naiisip ko, Panginoon, hindi ko pa nagkamali lang kayo nung sabihin nyo yun. Baka hiluho kayo. O baka nakadrugs kayo, Panginoon. Ba't naman sa dami-dami ng masasabi eh. Yung pa sinabi nyo. Kaya nagkakasala tayo araw-araw eh. Pero mo love your enemies. Alam na alam mo yung sinisira na niya yung buhay ng isang tao pero mamahalin mo pa rin. Alam na alam mo mali na yung tinuturo, mamahalin mo pa rin ang kamumuhian mo lang yung ginagawa niya. Kahirap. But, but Tikai was, was a beloved brother and we ought to be like him. A faithful minister. We should be We should be ministering faithfully and the Bible even says abounding in the work of the Lord. Amen? And noticeably, there are people here in our churches who are not abounding. Dati active sila, ngayon hindi na. Ano dahilan mo? O sige, may dahilan ka. Tama ba yung dahilan mo biblically? Sige, pakita mo sa Bible na tama. At tutulungan pa kitang maglaylo. Diyan nakikita sa church natin. Ngayon, wala na tayong choir. Oh. Bakit? Eh, hindi matiis nung leader ng choir. Hindi lang. Siya nga po sa rumaraing mala. Yun nga ang problema natin eh. Kung nagkakaisa lang tayo, wala tayong problema. Hindi kasi tayo magkaisa eh. Kasi mga kapatid, ikaw, kung pwede lang, bigyan ko kayo lahat ng schedule tumayo sa harapan ng pulpito mag-preach kahit kayong mga babae eh. Para makita nyo kung ano ang nakikita ng mga taong nakatayo dito sa pulpito. Kung mga lang ngayon, habang nagpipreach ako, meron hindi man makatingin sa akin. Ewan ko bakit. Pag may point akong idadrive, ewan ko kung bakit. Tayo ka rito, tingnan mo. O kaya pa nagpipreach ako, mag-a-assign ako ng isa na nakatayo rito. O dalawa, kabilaan, parang, ano, worship team. Titingin lang kayo sa mga tao habang nagpipreach ako. Magka-idea kayo. Kayo minsan magtataka, si pastor nagpipreach, biglang lang nagkaganon. Mala, intindihan nyo lang. Maintindihan nyo lang. Ano kayo simulan natin bukas, ano? Tama, may dalawa naman ditong upuan. Uh, we, we will call our observers for the day. Isa doon? Isa rito. Hindi, palagay ko magandang gawin. Palagay ko, palagay ko. Titignan nyo lang yung mga tao habang nagpipreach. Yun. Ah, okay, sige, gawin natin. Gawa ka nga, may ka ng schedule ng mga pag-upuin natin. Hindi kasi ako gusto kong makita nyo eh. Kasi baka sabihin nyo, napaka-overacting mo naman, Pastor. Tignan natin, tignan mo. Maganda pa, kunyari, nakaupo ka dyan, mayroong may hindi gusto sa'yo, subukan mo tignan. Ganun kasi yung mga kapatid eh. Pero mo narito ka, nagtuturo ka ng word of God, nagtuturo ka ng katotohanan, niismiran ka. Eh, na may personal ka, Pastor eh. Meron pa preaching na hindi personal. Nagpapatama ka, Pastor, eh. Meron pa preaching na hindi natama. Abe, pambiram, preach ako niyang walang tatamaan. Anong preaching yung walang tatamaan? Bigyan niyo ako ng text na walang tatamaan. Kahit nga in the beginning, may tatamaan pa rin eh. In the beginning, matino ka! Oh, hindi ba? May tatamaan pa rin eh. Wala kang ma-text dito na walang tatamaan. Bakit? This is word of life. At kung buhay ka, tatamaan ka. Hindi nyo lang alam pag nag-papers ang pastor, karamihan sa kanya tama. Hindi lang alata kasi siya nag preach But we all struggle. 
But can we encourage each other while we are struggling? And can you be a Tychicus who will say, yes, Paul, you are in prison. I know the fight that you are fighting. I know how hard it is. I know the heat of the battle. But in spite of what will happen, even though you are being bombarded by the enemy, even though you are being sur uh, surrounded by the enemy, I want you to know that I am going to stand with you even if my life will be required in doing so. Even that which is may happen. For the purpose of doing the will of God. Amen? So why does Paul love Tychicus? The way that he did. Why? Because Tychicus was a lovable person. If you want people to love you, be lovable. Amen? Though we are commanded to love even the unlovable, it will be a great advantage for you to be loved if you are lovable. But nila ako laging hinahag? Because you are huggable. Bakit na ako nila laging kinikiss? Because you are kissable. Bakit nila ako laging inaasar? Because you are azarable. Ay, di ba? Yun lang naman yun eh. Oh. Bakit hanggang ngayon hindi ko maabot yung dapat kong abutin? Because you are gapangable. Oh. Sa bagal, hindi mo maabot. Bago mo marating yung iniirog mo, panis na. Oh. Di ba? Because Paul knew that he can depend on Tychicus. Why? He says that Tychicus is a faithful Minister, if a person is faithful, you can depend on that person. It means he is dependable. That's why Tychicus is indispensable when it comes to the ministry. And if you are surrounded by this kind of people who is serving, who is faithful, who is lovable, then it will make things easier for you to accomplish. There are a lot of Christians who want to be served than to serve. That is our problem today. Because if only all will serve, then we have no more time to quarrel. We have no more time to fight. We have no more time to have, you know, tampo with each other. Kasi busy ka eh. Kaya ka nagtatampo, nag-watch ka eh. Tapos, may hindi ka na gusto. Ganun tumingin niya sa akin. Natampo ka na eh. Pero busy ka dahil mo ginagawa. Sino makakatampuhan mo? Oh. Eh kung lahat nagsaserve. O oh, hindi ba? Hindi. Okay tayo sa biyaya ng Panginoon. So we need Tikaikos in the ministry. We need Tikaikos who has a servant's heart. Sabi nga nung isang post, we have too many leadership conferences, but almost none servant conference or servanthood conference. That's why all are trying to be leaders instead of all serving by the grace of God. So we need to take us. Not only that, but Onesimus. He says in verse 9, read Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother. Be more faithful and beloved brother who is one of you. They shall make known unto you all things which are done here. Sino si Onesimus? Onesimus was a man with a very sinful past. He was a runaway slave, a thief. And because of all the bad things that he has done in his life, he was in prison. But by the grace of God, he was put in a, the same prison where the Apostle Paul was. And that is the best prison that you can be. Amen? And Paul witnessed to him, and Onesimus got saved. So he was a runaway slave. He was a sinner, but sent back to be a brother. Not just a brother, but Paul says, a faithful and beloved brother. Before, Onesimus was excited whenever he saw gold, whenever he saw silver, whenever he saw money. He's going to be excited that, that Onesimus, when he saw money, he will simut 
the money, Onesimut the money. He will Onesimut the gold. He will Onesimut the silver. He will Simut Simut everything. And he will run away. But now, money does not excite him anymore. He is excited when it comes to the ministry. Hindi na pera nagpapa-excite sa kanya. Yun ang gawain ng Diyos. Ano ba nagpapa-excite sa iyo, kapatid? Ah, dito mas marai, dito ang pera. Ah, doon mas marai, doon ang pera. Abi sabi ng Diablo, one click lang pala to. Ah, painan ko lang to ng pera, tapos na to. Ah, diba? Kasi nang hirik, nang gusto mo eh, pera. Oh, lalaki, babae, bakla, tomboy. Kapangyarihan. Lahat. Material things. Sabi ng Diablo, madali. Napakadaling gapiin ng mga taong to. Kasi ang excitement nila, wala naman sa spiritual na bagay. They are not willing to trade the material things of this world. They are not willing to trade their own happiness for the ministry. Kaya kapatid, pag ang inahanap mo, kaligayahan mo, ang Diyos mo ang sarili mo. Sapagat ang Diyos, ang naglilingkod sa Diyos, ay idinideny ang kanyang sarili. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. hindi ka nakasama. Patay ka na, si Kristo na namumuhay sa'yo. Oh, kaya, bigyan mo nga ng justification yung gusto mong gawin. Hmm, sige. Pero may justification. Kailangan nun ang pamilya ko ang tulong ko. Hindi kaya ng Diyos na tulungan ng pamilya mo kung ikaw magtatapat maglingkod sa Diyos. Sige nga. Kung hindi kaya ng Diyos. Kasi nililimitahan natin ng Diyos eh. We are creating a God of our, we have a God of our own creation and our own making. Or there is the all-powerful God and we doubt that all-powerful God. That He can do things in our behalf if we're going to abandon all and just give everything to God. We do not trust God. That's the problem. We do not really believe in God. That is our problem. But we only use God in order to cover up the guilt that is in our hearts so that at least we can say I am doing something for the Lord but don't you realize that with God it is all or nothing thou shalt love the Lord with all all sa kapampangan all all Tutulog ako sa tindahan. Madaling araw, may kumatok. Alas dos yata. Oh, ano yun? Pasalwa ng halls. Sa katagalog, pabili nga ng halls. Ano? Ako. Halls. Anong halls? Yung uh, halls. Halls pala kanya. Nagkamali ako. si. Sabi ko sa inyo, pag nagkwento ako, dapat makikinig kayo. Kasi nakakalimutan ko na eh. Wala na akong bagay na hindi nakakalimutan eh. Alls pala kanya, alls kanya. Alls. Anong alls? Yung alls kanya. Magkano lang yun? Noong time na yun, jeez. Ginising niya ako ng alas dos ng madaling araw. Sino si Enesimus? Dating masamang tao. Pero ano? Binago ng Diyos. Amen? Ano pa tayo ngayon? Masama pa tayo sa harapan ng Diyos o hindi? Kung practically masama tayo sa harapan ng Diyos, pwede ba tayong baguhin? O di magpabago tayo sa Diyos? Amen? Ibig sabihin natin wala ng pag-asa itong taong to. Ba't di lang sabihin, Panginoon, baguhin niyo siya? At pag sinabi mo ng Diyos, baguhin niyo siya, magtiwala kang babaguhin siya ng Diyos. At pagka nagbago siya, sabihin mo, praise God! Nagbago siya. Panginoon, baguhin mo ako. At kapag ka nabago ka, sabihin mo, praise God! Nabago ako. Bakit? Because there is now one person who has before standing for what is wrong. They are standing far away from God who is now going back as a prodigal son who is now going back as Onesimus, 
who is now turning a new leaf in his life and he is going to fill that leaf with exploits that will glorify God in his life. Salamat! May isang tao na nagbago na ngayon ay maglilingkod sa Diyos. Kesa naman sa hindi na. O oh, hindi ba? Kesa naman sa hindi na. Ay kung hindi ka pa nagbago, makapaglilingkod ka pa sa Diyos. Tandaan mo, walang kristyanong hindi dumaan sa pagkakamali sa buhay. Kaya nga ang tawag dyan, progressive sanctification. Oh. Ibig sabihin, somewhere along the way, you are moving and when there is a moving part, there is a possibility that you will stumble and you will fall. But what should be the attitude? You stand up and if you cannot stand up, those who will see you uh, fall must reach their hand. At itayo ka nila. Ganun. Minsan ang pagtatayo, soft. Minsan naman, ano ka, tayo! Halos maba, maputol yung ano mo. Yung kamay mo. Pero importante, tumayo ka. Gawin mo kung ano yung tama. Bakit? Kasi, hindi pa huli ang lahat. Dahil kung huli na ang lahat, patay na tayo wala na tayong magagawa. Ganun. Kaya, kaya dapat, ang tao, limbawa ako, hindi ko sasabihin, hindi na pwede magbago ng taon to. Liban lang sa isa o dalawa. Pastor, meron ka pang tinatangin, wala akong magagawa, eh talagang, sa buong buhay ba naman, nakikita mo eh. Sa buong buhay ba naman, talagang, consistent eh. Siguro, masasabi mo na lang, kaya talagang hindi na magbabago, hindi kasi ligtas. Kasi ang ligtas, magbabago at magbabago eh. Hindi mo kaya, kapatid, ang Holy Spirit, pagka naririnig mo yung tama, kasi pag naririnig mo yung tama ang Holy Spirit, magkukonvict agad yan. Eh, ba't yung iba, pastor, hindi na ako convict ng tama? Yun ang problema kasi hindi naririnig, hindi na ako convict ng Holy Spirit. Kasi hindi naririnig yung tama, walang ikukonvict ang Holy Spirit. Nakon niyo may pagsabihin? Pumunta ka sa Chiesa, hindi pinapangaral ang katotohanan. Hindi pinapangaral ng agen sa limbawa sa pagsusugal. Ano yung kukunpik ng Holy Spirit kundi pinipreach yun? Nagsusugal ka. Paano malalamang mali? Oh. So kailangan merong katuruan ng Bible tungkol doon at pag narinig ng, ng Holy Spirit, ikukunpik ka ron dahil narinig mo. Ano kanyang ibig sabihin? So kaya dapat sa church, ipinapangaral yung whole counsel of God para magkaroon ng foolproof ang ministry. Yun ang ibig sabihin noon. Eh kung sa church, ang, ang pangaral, puro giving. Magaling ka sa giving. Di ba? Subukan nyo rito, puro giving ang ipipreach ko. Abi, magiging giver kayo. Eh, yun naririnig nyo eh. Oh. Pero pastor, hindi rin totoo. Sa bagay, puro contending for the faith na pinapangaral natin. Wala pa rin hindi nagkukontent. Siguro talagang ano rin yan, preference din ng mga tao. Kung gusto pa rin nila o kung ayaw pa rin nila. So Onesimus started off being a criminal, but now he was a Christian. Onesimus had a bad past, but Jesus changed all of that when he got Save. A person with a sinful past can have it blotted out by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And a Christian who is living in a bad, a bad life can still be cleansed by the same blood that saved him in the first place. Contra, contra ka. Amen? So we can all change. Matter of pride lang yan. Kasi, kasi minsan, ay sinabi ko na kasi eh. Eh, ano naman kung sinabi mo na? Inumpisahan ko na kasi. Eh, ano naman kung inumpisahan mo na? Yun na kasi yung alam nila eh. Eh, ano naman kung yun na yung alam nila? Hindi ba pwedeng sabihin mo, eto kasi ang tama eh. Di ba? Tama mga kapatid hindi? Tama. Oh. Ang nangyayari sa atin ito eh. Ang jablo, ang luwag, ang, ang laki ng pinto 
niyang makapasok eh. Alam mo, bigay example sa inyo ha. Merong iiba ng ginagawa o ng pamamaraan, tapos all of a sudden, magkakaroon ng ibang attitude towards the church. Sabi ko nga, bakit? At iisipin na ang church nagkaroon ng ibang attitude towards him or her. Sabi ko, bakit? Ano nangyari? Ako niya, ibig sabihin? Halimbawa, kamukhaan to si Eli. He decided to go back home. Ta- eh, kung magbabago siya ng attitude, anong masama kung umuwi siya? Tayo ba? Magbabago pa tayo ng attitude kasi iniwan niya tayo. Hindi. Kung ano yung tama, kung ano yung dapat, at minsan kahit na mali pa, meron pa rin pangunawa pero walang tigil na panghihimok para sa tama. Eh, kita niyo sa Eli, kahit matagal na wala pagdating dito, parang hari pa rin ng trato sa kanya. Oh. Walang hintong. Kain sa labas, walang hintong. Mamaya, may schedule pa yata. Oh. Ano ba nagbago? Wala. Kasi settled at nakross na talaga eh. Bakit mababago pa? Oo. Oh. When something is settled, it's settled. Especially if it is settled at the cross. Oh, hindi ba? Me too. Ganon. Verse 10. Ano sabi niya sa verse 10? Uh, Aristarchus. Oh, brother. Ang palayaw. Star. Oh, mira. <laughs> kadaim pa. Brad, ito, itong preaching ito, hinanda ko para sa'yo. Kasi alam ko, mahirapang akong maganun ng pangalan. Pero maraya akong suggestion sa'yo hanggang mamaya. Aristarchus, kanya, my fellow prisoner, saluted you. Biro mo? Napakaganda, nasa prison ka. At may kasama kang faithful sa loob ng prisoner. Amen? Amen? Amen. Eh, at least, alam, alam, si Paul hindi siya nag-iisa doon. Salute at you and Marcus, sisters, son to Barnabas. Sino yan? Si Mark yan. Touching whom ye receive commandments, if he come unto you, receive him. Sino si Aristarchus? Sabi nga rito, a person with a sympathetic heart that he was in prison together with the Apostle Paul. Di ba? Kasama siya doon sa prison. Ni Apostle Paul. Talagang naiintindihan niya ang kalagayan ni Paul at sa kabila ng lahat, nakapag-minister siya ng tamang-tama sa kalagayan ni Apostle Paul. Aristarchus was a believer who stood as a companion in the many, many trials of the Apostle Paul. The Bible says in Galatians 6.2, bury one another's burden. Magkargahan tayo ng bigat. Hindi magpakarga ka ng bigat. Iba yung tinutulungan kang kargahin yung iyong bigat. Iba yung pinapakarga mo yung iyong bigat. Ako niya ibig sabihin. Kinakarga mo, nakita ka, kapatid, tutulungan kita. Hindi yung pakikarga nga. May karga siya eh. Amen? May karga ako, may karga ka eh. Ngayon, sa kinakarga ko, meron pa akong lakas. Yung nananatiling lakas na yun, tutulungan kitang kargahin yung karga mo. Kung nahihirapan ka nang sa ganong gumaan. Ganon din ang bawat isa sa atin. Ganon itong si ano? Si Aristarchus. Kinakarga niya yung bigat ng mga nararanasan ng mga tao. Tinan mo sa verse number 11. Ang sabi dito, and Jesus, who is called Justus, who are of the circumcision, these only are my fellow servants unto the kingdom of God, which have been a comfort unto me. Ano raw si Aristarchus at si Justus? They are a comfort to the Apostle Paul. Why? Isipin mo kung si Paul nasa prison na, kung si Paul hirap na hirap na, kung si Paul ikinulong na, lahat ginawa na sa kanya, wala man lang siyang comfort. Isipin mo kung ano ang magagawa sa taong ganun. 
Subukan mo, nakita mo, lugmok yung kapatid mo, nakaupo, lungkot na lungkot, hirap na hirap sa buhay niya, at pagkatapos hindi mo man i-comfort, o kaya sabihin mo pa sa kanya. Yung, yung mga kaibigan ni, ano, ni Job, buhukan ng kasalanan mo yan. Hmm. Ano sabi niya? You are all miserable comforter. Oh, di ba? Lugmok na, hirap na, hirap na. Pagdaan mo, pabibigatan mo pa. Dapat kargahin mo yung... yung kaya nakalugmok yan, hirap sa karga niya eh. So kargahin mo, makaangat man lang ng konti. May isa pa lumapat, kinarga, umangat ng konti. May isa pa kinarga. Abay, naglalakad na sila. Sa biyaya ng Panginoon. Ganun din dapat sa maging attitude natin. Comforter ka ba? Oh. Di ba pag malamig na malamig, pag may comforter, ang sarap matulog? O oh, comforter ka ba? Mm. Supporter ka ba? Mm. Are you a comfort to those people who are trying to carry something that is very, very hard? Aristarchus had been a means of encouragement to the Apostle Paul. Listen, we need more encouragers in the ministry than discouragers. Dapat mag-encourage tayo, mga kapatid. Encourage natin ng isa't isa. Lalo na yung, yung mga leaders. E leader kayo, okay, dapat kayo nag encourage nag encourage kami, pero kailangan din namin ng encouragement. O, oh, hindi pwedeng ay hindi, leader yan, malakas yan. Sabi siya yun. Ang madalas nga manghina yung leader eh, kasi karga ng karga eh. Oh. Kaya, sa Amerika, statistics ha, 1,800 approximately pastors are quitting the ministry. Pakinggan nyo, every month. Bakit? Why? Are they quitting the ministry every month? 1,800 pastors. Why? That's why if you have a pastor who keeps on pushing, at least honor that effort by encouraging him. Sige, pastor. Kaya natin yan. Hindi kaya mo yan, ha? Sige, kaya mo yan. Kaya mo yan. Sige, sige tulak pa. Hindi. Pastor, kaya natin yan. Kasi kung sasabihin mo lang, kaya ko yan, eh, huwag ka na magsalita. Nakaka-istorbo pa yun eh. Hirap na, hindi, kaya mo yan. Kaya mo yan. Halika nga rito. Tumulak ka. At kaya natin yan. Amen? So that is what we need to do. That is why we are a church, we are a body, fitted together by God. In order to function as a whole. Para magawa natin ang kalooban ng Diyos. Look at, again, go back to verse 10. And Marcus. Yan, sino yan? Si Mark yan. Ito yung nakalaban ni Apostle Paul. There was a time where they had a dissension. And then Paul and Barnabas on their first missionary journey, sinama nila si John Mark, but John Mark went back for reasons that were not mentioned by the Bible. So when the second missionary journey is about to start, Barnabas wanted to take John Mark with them, but Paul says, no, he left us. So what happened is that there was a split between Paul and Barnabas. But the good thing is this, instead of one missionary journey, it became two. And they were able to spread the gospel. Maganda kapatid, kahit hindi tayo magkasundo kung dadami gawain eh. Pero hindi tayo mag- nagkasundo, gugulo gawain, wag naman. Amen? Kung meron talaga tayong prinsipyo, panindigan natin. Kung tamang pareho yan, gagamitin ng Diyos yan. Oh, di, nagkaroon ng problema. John Mark went with Barnabas and then Silas and Paul's partnership were born during that time. And then, pagkatapos nun, nagkaroon ng Maras maraming gawain. So, actually, even though that is only the second missionary journey, it became two missionary journeys. Alam niyo sa Amerika, meron doon lugar, West Virginia. 
Doon sa West Virginia, pagpunta mo, mababasa mo rin yung isang church, Harmony Baptist Church. Mag-travel ka doon sa era na yon, may mababasa ka, New Harmony Baptist Church. Nag-split yun. Tinayo, New Harmony. Mag-travel ka pa, nakalagay, New Harmony Baptist 2. So out of one church, naging tatlo. Harmony. <laughs> Pangalong pa naman, Harmony. Pastor, ba't alam mo? Yung isa ho, supporter ko. <laughs> alam mo yung pangalan ni Pastor? Gribol, akala ko, grabol. <laughs> oh, isang lugar! Tatlong churches! Oh, bakit? Meron silang harmony. <laughs> oh, sa Festus, Missouri. First Baptist Church of Festus. Na split. Pinayo. Second Baptist Church of Festus. Pastor, ba't alam mo? Supporter ko yung Second Baptist Church of Festus. Pareho kami sinusuportahan ni Pastor Lorena. Doon kami nag-preach pareho. Sa lugar na yun. No? Laging ganun. Mayroon mo magkaroon pa ng third. Baptist Church of Festus. Sa Missouri naman yan. So minsan, may mga, eh pastor, okay lang mag-split. Hindi. Pero kung mag split kayo, huwag kayong tatalikod sa Diyos. At kung merong may mali, ayusin. At itama sa harapan ng Panginoon. Ganun lang naman yun eh. Why? There was a man whose future survived. Why? Because he kept on opening his heart so that the Holy Spirit can work in his life. Kaya sabi ni Paul, if he comes unto you, receive him. Why? Paul is a person who gives chances after chances after chances to people even though he was wronged by these people. Hindi ho nagtatanim si Pablo ng sama ng loob sa kanyang kapwa. Ako hanggat maaari, ayoko rin magtanim ng sama ng loob sa kapwa ko. Pero may dalawang nakatanim ngayon, sana mabunot. Namaya tayo. Sana mabunot. Timing na timing. Eh, no? <laughs> Galing. Para nung nagpipreach ako tungkol sa Diablo, sabi ko, ng demonyo! Biglang, kumid. <laughs> sabi ko, galing naman ang timing nito. So, kaya laging merong dapat pagkakataon at hindi natin sinasaraduhan ng pinto ang tao. Sabi ko nga, kahit yung mga dinisiplina natin, sabi ko, buma- magpakumbaba ka, Bumalik ka, makipag-usap ka, i-resolve natin, at pagkatapos, tutulungan ka natin makahanap ng simbahan na kung saan gagamitin ka ng Panginoong Diyos. Ano naman ang mapapala natin merong hindi na nakabalik sa Diyos? Anong nangyari? Ano na pala natin? Bala tayo na pala eh. Kaya lang, ba't natin ginagawa? Kasi gusto natin matulungan. Minsan nga lang, may mga approach na you, it may seem harsh, but that's how it should be done. Like for example, if you're sick, sometimes medicine, oral medicine, that's, that's smooth. That is easy. But sometimes it might need surgery. And it is very uncomfortable. And sometimes it is very dangerous. But for the same purpose of curing you of your illness or your disease. Sometimes it is like that. But the good thing is that a person may turn his back on the Lord but it, is, it will be honorable for that person to turn his back to the Lord again. Di ba may kasabihan tayo? Uh, second time around? Love is sweeter the second time around. Yan. Mas nagiging close, mas nagiging sweet. Di ba pag, pag kayo mag-asawa, nag-away, tapos yung mag-away, sweeter kayo. Ikaw naman kasi konting bagay lang. Halika nga rito. 
ko kasi nakakainis ka. Lagi mo na lang akong ginaganoon. <laughs> Ay, hindi ba? Halik nga rito. Oo, oh, hindi ba? Oh, ganun yun eh. Doon marami nabubuong bata eh, pag nag-aaway eh. Huh. Kagabi may nag-aaway. O oh, ewan ko kung nakabuo. O oh, ganun eh. Di ba? Ang pinaka-kadalas, ang pinaka-sweet yung pagkatapos nyo mag-away. Kahit yung mga magkaibigan eh, pag nag-away, nagbati, mag-aya ka pong po eh. Say, say na brother. <laughs> Hindi halata, di ba? Kaya pala may hiling makipag-away. Say, say na brother. mahala tayo. Oh. Ganon. So kaya laging merong pagkakataon. Amen? Pagkakataon. Hindi tayo yung mga tao na eh, hindi, wala na pag-asa yan. Nakagalit ko na yan. Habang buhay ko nang kagalit yan. Kaya kapatid, pag may nagawa ka sa tingin mo, nagkamali ka, iayos mo lang. Lahat ay nakahandang tanggapin yun. Without any issue. Kasi, ano ba nakatutuwa? Yung nagkamali ka, nagtuloy-tuloy ka, o nagkamali ka, bumalik ka, anong mas nakatutuwa? Ha? Ah, yung po nagtuloy-tuloy na pastor, ano ba naman tayo? Hindi, yung nagbalik, yun ang nakakatuwa. Kita mo balik ni Eli, tuwan-tuwa tayo. Oh, Di ba? But welcome, welcome. Ganon, di ba? Welcome mo, Brad. Welcome mo, Brad. Oh. Ganon lang yun eh. 11, verse 11. And Jesus, which is called Justus. Kita nyo, pinalit, pin- iba yung tawag. Kasi mahirap talaga yung kapangalan mo, Panginoon eh. May angel ako, ang pangalan niya, Jesus eh. Pag pinapagalitan, ang hirap eh. Di ba? <laughs> ako sinasabi ko sa'yo. Kaya tinawag na lang siyang boy. <laughs> Mahirap yun, <rong>, umurahin mo. <laughs> Pangalang ganun. Mahirap yun, buti pa kung hudas eh. <laughs> hudas ni ka dito. Napakadali eh. So, Justus, sabi niya, which is called Justus, who are of the circumcision, these are my fellow workers unto the kingdom of God, which have been a comfort unto me. Ano naman ang pagkakaiba nito? Si Justus, he turned from his religion to Christ. Kasi of the circumcision siya. Si Paul ay apostle to the Gentiles. Even though they should not be the same, kasi sa Gentiles nagmi-minister si Paul, even though he was a Jew, ito rin si Jesus is a Jew, but they minister to the Gentiles. So sa kanila, mas importante yung pagmi-minister kesa sa kanilang personal preference. Kaya nga sabi ko, if you are going to serve God, you deny yourself because yourself has nothing to do with serving the Lord. It is only because of the power of the Holy Spirit because it is God who is doing that in your life. And he was a fellow worker of the Apostle Paul and he said, he is also a comfort unto him carrying his burden. So kapareho siya ni ano? Nung, uh, sinasabi ko isa? Si Aristarchus nagkakarga sila, tumutulong sila. Kaya Apostle Paul, okay, bilisan na natin. Verse 12, si Epaphras, who is one of you, servant of Christ, saluted you always, laboring fervently for you in prayers, that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Verse 13, for I, sabi niya, bear him record that he had a great zeal for you and them that are in Laodicea and them in Hira. Police. Si Epapras ay founder ng mga churches sa Colossian pagkatapos mag-start ni Paul ng mga church. Siya yung mga nagpatuloy. At most probably, siya yung current pastor nung church doon sa Colossi. At nung kasi nagkaroon ng heresy, nagkaroon ng problema, tumakbo siya sa Rome para humingi ng tulong kay Paul kung paano niyang isosolve yung problema. Kaya lang, hinuli siya, ikinulong din. So, hindi siya nakabalik sa Colossi. 
And even though he was not able to go back to Colossae, Paul says that every day he is fervently praying for you. Talagang walang hinto yung pananalangin niya para sa inyo. At sabi ni Paul, in effect, we are having prayer meeting here almost every day for you that are at Laodicea and Hierapolis and at Colossae. So, dapat pinagpe-pray po natin mga kapatid yung bawat isa. Amen? Kasi ang maganda sa prayer, it is not restricted by location. You can pray for anybody anywhere in the world by the grace of God. Saan ka mamagpunta? Maipagpe-pray mo kami. Saan ka mamagpunta? Maipagpe-pray ka namin. Yun ang kagandaan sa prayer. And it is one very important thing that each and everyone should do. It is always an encouragement if you know that people are praying for you. Tinanong nga nila ang secret ng mga, uh, mga great pastors in times past. Ang sabi nila, there is actually no secret. The thing is that people are praying whenever we are preaching. And thereby releasing the power of God in the lives of people. Kaya, attitude natin dapat sa preaching, prayerful tayo. Huwag na lang pumikit. Nay. Pwede naman, nagpipreach, Panginoon, mangusap po kayo sa bawat sa mangusap kayo sa amin. Hindi yung, nagpipreach, sabay kayo. Baka akala ng pastor, natutulog na kayong lahat. Pwede magpray ng dilat, lalo na pag nagda-drive. Huwag yun. Delikado mag-drive ha. Panginoon, ingatin niyo po kayo. Dilat mo, langit na. Si San Pedro may hawak na manok. Pwede mag ng hindi napikit. Common sense din naman yung pagpipray, amen? Pero you can always pray and it is always an encouragement knowing that people are praying for you. Verse number 14. And sabi sa 14, Look the beloved physician. Ah, see? Hindi lang yung basta ganun, ang ganda rin na you the, the people that are surrounding you, there are people with talent that they dedicated to God. Si Paul, maraming problema to physically eh. At saka health. Pero, i-dedicate ni Luke yung buhay niya na sumama kay Paul to attend to him personally. Biro mo meron siyang personal doctor. Ano man ang mangyari may tumitingin sa kanya nangangalaga. Bakit? Kasi kailangan humaba ang buhay niya by the will of God dahil marahe pang pinagagawa sa kanya ang Panginoon. And look at this person. Is it not comforting to know that there is a person who has a very specialized talent by your side? Na alam mo, tutulungan ka kahit na anuman ang mangyari. Di ba? At siya beloved. Ibig sabihin, napakaganda ng kanyang ugali. So, Pero yung, yung isang, yung susunod, tignan mo. Sabi rito, and look the, hindi, balik ka rin, babalik ka rin na lang. Pag muna umalis doon. Sabi, look the beloved physician and Dimas greet you. Sino si Dimas? A person with a very sad Future. Ano lang ang sabi ni Paul? And Dimas. Wala mang description. Di ba? Lahat may beloved, faithful, etc., etc. Pagdating kay Dimas, and Dimas, greet you. Bakit walang masabi? Yung halimbawa, may taong magpapatotoo para sa'yo. Matagal kaya siyang magsasalita. Ano masasabi mo halimbawa kay Brother Cedric? Thank you. Buka na. Walang masabi si Paul eh. Bakit siguro even at this time, Paul can see that Dimas is slowly turning away from the ministry. And listen. Actually, sa akin ito, listen. You must also accept the fact that there are people who will turn their backs in the ministry or away from the ministry because they love the world. They love pleasure. They love themselves more than they love God. 
I need to accept that. We need to accept that. Pero one thing is good. Sa walo na binanggit, isa lang yung ganun. Sana. Amen? Sana. Isa lang. Sa walo. O kung pwede, wala. Sa walo. Ang magiging ganito. Natatalikot, lalayo. Sapagkat finorsake ang gawain ng Diyos. Dito, Dimas Gritchu, walang comment. Pero sa 2 Timothy 4.10, meron ng comment for Dimas Hat. Dimas Hat, forsaken me. 2 Timothy 4.10. Meron ng comment dito. Kanina wala eh. For Dimas Hat, forsaken me, having loved this present world. Ganun lang naman yan eh. When you take your eyes from the Lord, or you change your focus, there is only one direction away from God. Wala nang ibe. Kasi, nadifocus ka na eh. So, yung, yung sabi nga pa, pag nag-aararo, ang rule sa nag-aararo, wag titingin sa likod. Pag tumingin ka sa likod, yung aararuhin mo, magiging zigzag. Kasi, yung maglakad ka lang, nakatingin ka sa likod. Minsan, hindi mo alam, out of ano ke, way ke, kasi nakatingin ka sa likod. So, ang focus, lagi kang, may isang tinitignan, halimbawa, yun yung end of the line. Doon ka sa end of the line nakatingin. Hanggat nakatingin ka ron, at hindi nababago yung focus mo, darating ka sa end of the line, tatamaan mo siya. Pero pag tumingin ka na sa likod, hindi mo na alam kung saan napunta yung araro. This is what happened to Dimas. He looked at the word. And the word is enticing. The word is glittering. The word is filled with pleasure, catering to the flesh. Just go to Bangkok and go on top of Bayoki restaurant and you will enjoy the sight. And you will post it. And you will tell people how beautiful it was to be up there. Sing! All the beautiful buildings and the lights over there in Bangkok. Don't you know that perhaps the most traveled person in the Bible is the Apostle Paul? But you will almost never hear him mention about how beautiful a place was because he's always looking at the souls of men. And for him, the most beautiful sight is the salvation of people. That's the most beautiful sight for him. But Demas turned his eyes off the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, he has forsaken Paul. And he turned to the Word. The Word will pull us away from the work of God. So let us, let us be careful when it comes to the Word. So as we end, I want you to notice the remaining verses as we end this, look at verse number 15. Salute the brethren which are in Laodiceans and Nymphas. Kala natin, babae ito eh, no? Nymphas. Kasi nympha ngayon, pag nympha ang pangalan mo. Babae ka eh. And Nymphas, isa lang naman ng him na babae. Yung anak ni Brother Gomer. ba? Him. Pero babae. And the church which is in his house. So this was a believer who kept his house open for the service of the Lord. As Christians, we need to be hospitable. Our houses must be open for those people who want to serve and to worship the Lord, our God. And then he said, and when this epistle is read among you, cause that to be read also in the churches of the Laodiceans and that ye likewise read the epistle from Laodicea. So you will see that there was a church actually in Laodicea. During this time, it was a vibrant, spiritual, thriving church. But let us go to Revelation 3, 14 to, 18, to 19. 
Revelation 3, 14 to 19. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, ito yun, ito yung church, na ito, na sinulatan ni Paul. Write, this thing saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Before, they were a God-glorifying church, but now they are a God-sickening church. Dati, nag-glorify nila ang Diyos. Ngayon, nagkakasakit ang Diyos dahil sa kanila. Nagsuka ang Panginoon. Because of this church, Eladizia. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increase with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. How many churches do we have? Like this description. That they thought because they have everything, they're okay. But in the eyes of God, they're miserable and they're wretched and they're poor. And they are blind and they are naked. Look at verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eyes all that thou mayest see. Ang nakikita niya kasi sarili niya, hindi niya nakikita ang Diyos. Because if you will see God, there is not going to be any room for pride and arrogance in our hearts. Because all that we can utter is that I am a wretched, miserable person when we see the holiness of God. Look at verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten be zealous therefore and repent. How this mighty church fell. Why? Because they ceased to become vigilant. Kaya mga kapatid, nagsusumikap tayo na maging vigilant. Pati music ngayon, ayaw natin basta papasukin kung ano-ano music sa church. Hindi na tayo basta-basta magpapatayo sa pulpito ng kahit na sino-sino. Bakit? Kasi nung pasukin ng mga false prophets at false teachers sa mga churches, ngayon wala na sila. At karamihan ng mga churches na pasok na. Ano ang gagawin natin para matulungan sila? ba? Kaya ginagawa natin ito. Kasi marami ng lesson sa Bible. Na once mighty churches sa Jerusalem, may church pa bang matino? Wala na. Representative churches na lang. Hindi na tunay na church na buhay. So that's why we need to be vigilant and militant in what we are doing to contend for the faith and to preserve the purity of the church. Verse 17, And say to Archippus, Brad Archippus, ang kanyang palayaw, kiput. Marami talaga, Brad. Palagay ko, inap na tulong na sa iyo ito, ha? And say to Archippus, Take it to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, and that thou fulfill it. Kapatid, do you have a ministry? Are you fulfilling it? Do not be slack in fulfilling your ministry. Pag binigay ng Diyos na ministry sa iyo, gawin mo lahat na magagawa mo para ma-fulfill by the grace of God. Because we are expected to fulfill the ministry that the Lord has given to us. And then lastly, the salutation by the hand of me, Paul. Remember my bonds, grace with you. Amen. So Paul wanted them to know that he wrote this letter personally and that he wrote this from prison because he said, remember my bonds. And at the same time, Paul is asking the people, please don't forget about me. I need you. Pray for me, encourage me, support me as I am doing the same thing for you. Why? As I end in the ministry and in the work of the Lord, we need each other. Kaya it is very, very frustrating. Uulitin ko. Very frustrating kapag ka yung akala mo kasama mo, yung akala mo kakampi mo, yung akala mo makakatuwang mo, ay eh sila pa yung nagpapabigat ng mga pangyayari sa ating pakikipaglaban para sa gawain ng Diyos. 
Kapatid, eh bakit kasi nakikipaglaban kayo? Hindi kami. Lahat tayo inutusang makipaglaban. Kaya nga soldier, soldier, soldier. Di ba? Soldier, sundalo. Ang sundalo, pag may gera, ano ginagawa? Nakikipaglaban. May gera, dapat makipaglaban ka. Huwag mo sabihin, bakit kasi nakikipaglaban kayo? Ba't ang hilig nyo sa laban? Sino ba mahilig sa laban? Uulitin ko sa inyo kung gaano kahirap makipaglaban. Ako'y tuyot na tuyot na, mga kapatid, sa pakikipaglaban. Araw-araw may bagong kalaban. Araw-araw may bagong nilalabanan. Kanina kung napansin niyo ako, okay, palakad-lakad, palakad-lakad. Kinakalma ko sarili ko, kailangan kong tumayo, kailangan kong mag-preach. Pero ako'y nakikipaglaban ng napakatinding pakikipaglaban. Ang hirap. Pero alam mo, malaman ko lang na nalaman ko ng pamilya ko, solid sa akin, gumagaan. Malaman ko na ang church solid sa pakikipaglaban. Abay, mag-i-enjoy akong makipaglaban kahit araw-araw, gabi-gabi. Pero if you are being forsaken, minsan masasabi mo parang ano pang kabuluhan makipaglaban? Pero hindi pwede eh. Because when you surrender, you are surrendering the next generation. And who are the next generation? Our children. Pati, mahal mo ba mga magiging anak mo kahit wala ka pang anak? Mahal mo ba sila? Isecure mo ang future nila? Ilaban mo itong ngayon para meron silang abuting tama paglaki nila. Yun yun dapat na. Ano sabi? And David save his own generation by the will of God. This is our generation. If we will preserve this, it will be preserved to the next generation. Ang iba sabi, Pastor, pag uwi namin, di namin alam saan kami mag-a-attend, saan kami pupunta. Marami pa. Hindi nyo lang natin nakikita o hindi nyo palang siguro nakikita. Pero there is that fear. But if you are armed with the truth, if you are armed with what is right, hindi ka matatakot kahit walang church na sabihin mo magtatay, magtuturo ng katotohanan. Sapagkat sasabihin mo, wala pala magsisimula ako ng isa. Dahil ano pat pinaalam sa akin ng Diyos ang mga katotohanan ito, kung hindi ko rin ito ibabahagi sa mga tao. So kayong mga darating ang time, uuwi. Ito suggestion ko sa inyo. Arm yourself. Para pag uwi nyo, kung wala, kung meron, praise God, tuloy ka lang. Kung wala, andyan ka naman. Ikaw ang gagamitin ng Panginoon. So I hope and I pray that like these people that were mentioned at the end of the book of Colossians, that each and every one of us, by the grace of God, will become as an indispensable servant in the ministry of the Lord. Shall we stand? Panginoon, salamat, Ama, sabihan.